Hello friends and family of YouTube. Well, I got a little vlog that I wanted to share with you today, man. I have got a, got a nice little variety going on. Most of it takes place up in Tennessee. So uh, anyway, let me show you what uh, me and a buddy got into and uh, then I'm gonna show you something over at my dad's house. Well, me and a buddy of mine been out doing some riding out here in the countryside. Here's my buddy D. White right here. Man, we've been riding in this Jeep. And uh, where would you say we're at? We're what? down by the Elk River at Frito Lay property where they uh, have a sod farm. Is this still Fayetteville, Tennessee? It's Fayetteville, Tennessee. Okay. One of these days, I'm going to get D. White to sing for y'all, man. He is uh, He's a great singer, guitar player. Uh, but anyway, y'all have got to check this out. Look at this old bridge here. This bridge is probably from, I'm guessing, probably 19-teen to 1930s era. Look at all that old steel. Man, is that cool or what? Now, uh, this, this is no trespassing here. Uh, not saying that is or is not gonna happen, but uh, anyway, just wanted to let y'all know that this is a no trespassing area of Frito-Lay. Matter of fact, that's where me and old D.Y. met. We worked at uh, Frito together. And uh, anyway, this is the Elk River. And uh, we we're pretty close to some sod farms that uh, Frito Lay owns. And uh, what's kind of cool about that is they would take the water that they would wash off the potatoes with and they would cook the corn in. They would take that water and they would send over here to a sod farm and uh, they would water this sod, then sell the sod. So, uh, man, Frito-Lay doesn't let anything go to waste. Anyway, let me try to get some of this old metal here and show you how this thing's put together. Isn't that cool? And uh, let me try to get my, trying to grab a phone with just one hand, show you the thickness of that steel there. In case some of you's wondering, these old bolts. Boy, I'm shaking like Michael J. Fox with this thing today. All right. Anyway, we're gonna check this out a little better, but I just wanted to show you show y'all what was going on out here. Well, I just had to get out here and show y'all a little bit of this. And I know it said no trespassing, Frito Lay. I worked for that godforsaken company for five plus years. My buddy D. White, he did over twenty. Thirty years. Thirty years. That's a worst worst company I ever worked for. I don't mind saying that. The area I worked in was over 100 degrees just about 365 days a year and they couldn't even give me a water fountain. And I was not allowed to bring water to my work area either. So if I want to come out here on this, this beautiful bridge, I believe they owe me that. Man, this is cool. I do want to show y'all the uh, the floor of this thing. <laughs> this has got me a nervous wreck <laughs> walking on this old bridge. <laughs> well, being from the South, many times we get people joking on us. They'll say, I, I hear banjos playing or squeal like a pig, boy. They'll uh, make some kind of quote from the movie Deliverance. Well, we actually do have some people that live in the, uh, it's even here in Alabama, but you can find them pretty easy in the, in the hills of Tennessee. And uh, they kind of live like some of the people you do see on Deliverance. So uh, me and my buddy D. White, we go by a place that actually has like a compound and uh, I'm not going to mention the family's name. I'm not trying to humiliate them by showing you all this. But I do want to show you that it does exist. And uh, I think there's two compounds where this family uh, has residence. But uh, anyway, we're just going to show you one of them here. So here it is. Places, huh? They got. They said they got them all over the hot air places. Check it out. You're right. Isn't that precious? Yeah, buddy. Right there, right there, I'm stirring around. You got a pretty mild boy. 
<laughs> well, it's been a while since I told y'all a funny story, so y'all need to stick around because I do have a funny story that uh, took place over at my dad's house. So that's where the rest of this uh, video takes place. So uh, here we go. So I just made this uh, door to go under my dad's house so he can get up under there or somebody can to replace a water heater or something. But uh, he's had problems with animals getting up under there and tearing up under the house and trying to live up under it. So anyway, uh, just got that made up for him. Gonna go install it. He went to get us some uh, hinges to put on here. So man, yeah, we're gonna hang this thing up. And you can see we put us some cross bracing on here. We put uh, one on each corner and then where we uh, join the boards together here, we put uh, put this board here to connect the two. My dad was an engineer for many years. He, uh, he worked on some of the space program stuff and missiles. So he's a structural engineer. So of course we have to do everything uh, overkill. So, uh, which is fun. I love learning about this stuff, but uh, Anyway, it turned out pretty good considering what it is. It's gonna be uh, underneath the backside of a house. Nobody will ever see it again. And now that I got the uh, the door gate thing finished for him, I'm gonna finish tilling this garden while I'm waiting on him to get back from the from the hardware store uh, with those hinges. So, uh, man, yeah, this uh, this uh, garden thing's worked out pretty good. You can see how high he's got this thing. It's about 18 inches off the ground. So uh, that way he doesn't have to bend over so far to work in it. And uh, plus it'll keep animals out of, out of the garden as well. And you can see, put a little bit of a, like a fence wire all the way around this thing too. Now I tell you what folks, if y'all have never used one of these Mantis tillers, it's the first time I've used one. Man, I love this thing. I, I told him I want to borrow it. <laughs> I'll definitely bring it back, but it will be hard, man. I'd love to hang on to that thing. So you can see how fine that little tiller will till this up, man. I mean, it just just about make dust out of that uh, out of that dirt. So uh, man, it makes it great for planting. So definitely gonna take it take it to my house, borrow it for a little while, and get it get mine tilled up. He's got some little pots around here too that he'll have a few things growing in that. He said last year he did cucumber in one of these and he said that worked out real good he had the cucumber plant and just let the cucumber fall out on the ground and kind of run amok that way and he said man that was really good so i may try that myself I'll see that squirrel right there. That squirrel is about to meet Jesus and meet my boy. I'm about to send him right to heaven. That, that squirrel been chewing on my dad's house. You see him right there having fun with his tail. He been tearing that house all to pieces, getting up in the attic and tearing up wires. Yep, I'm gonna send him straight to heaven. I'll give you a close-up shot once I, once I put a bullet in him. Me and him talking back and forth to each other while I'm waiting on my dad to get the pellet gun. He's warning all the other squirrels something's going on over here. That's what all that racket's about he's doing. Hopefully y'all can hear him. He's doing like a... knock him right off that tree limb. Well, not trying to make fun of my dad, but if y'all have ever seen Tim Conway do his old man shuffle, where he walks real slow, but his feet only take these tiny little steps. Well, that's kind of how my dad is these days. He's taking small steps, takes forever to get anywhere. So I saw the squirrel come out of my dad's house and I knew that it had been a uh, They'd, they'd been having problems with a squirrel in the attic. So I asked him to go get the uh, pellet gun because we are in a city, so you can't just shoot a shotgun or a pistol or whatever. You've got to uh, kill it with a, a pellet gun. That's the best you can do. 
So I have never shot his pellet gun before, and uh, I keep talking to the squirrel while I'm waiting on my dad. And uh, it's the same conversation over and over me and the squirrel are having is, <coughs> and the squirrel will do it back to me, and he just keeps staring at me. So, uh, man, I had, I mean, he was within range for at least five minutes. So I told my dad, I said, you're gonna have to pump up the pellet gun before you get out here, because if you come out here with that pellet gun and you go to pumping it, sure enough, that squirrel's gonna take off. So you're gonna have to pump it up in the house before you bring it out here to me. So, so he did. And I've never shot this pellet gun before, but I've got one just like it. And man, I tell you what, I can shoot a fly off of a stump from a hundred foot. So I thought, man, this is going to be a cakewalk hitting this squirrel because he's only, I don't know, 30 foot away from me. Man, he is staring right at me. I've got a good shot at him. <laughs> so my dad hands me the pellet gun and uh, I, I get a good aim on it. I do my breath, get my breath the way I want it. Got the sight on the, on the squirrel's head. Go to pull the trigger. Nothing happens. So uh, I'm looking the gun over. I'm thinking maybe it needs pumping up. Maybe I didn't get the BB in there right. So I'm fooling with that. I get another look at the uh, squirrel, get him, get him all ready to go, go to pull the trigger. Again, nothing happens. And I'm like, man, what is wrong with this thing? And my dad said, did you turn the safety off? And I was like, no, I, I mean... Anytime you hand somebody a gun, of course you should turn on the safety. But again, I have shot my my pellet gun uh, 48,261 times. And uh, I grew up with it in my right arm all the time. I never did put a safety on. I should have. It's just one of those things I never did. So I didn't think to even check the safety. So now I get a third look at this squirrel. And uh, by now... It's kind of messed me up. Anybody who's uh, shot uh, guns at, you know, anytime you're trying to aim at something, you've got to have, um, you know, it's like you get into a rhythm and anything that messes up your rhythm will really throw you off. So anyway, so I get a third look at this squirrel and I'm ready to shoot him now. Got the uh, safety turned off. We're ready to go. So uh, I get him sighted in pull the trigger and it's like, <laughs> and the BB just goes Doop, like that. Now it does go up and it hits the squirrel up on top of the head and just kind of bounces off of his head. It didn't even, it didn't even have enough pressure on the gun to uh, penetrate. And he kind of, the squirrel kind of looked at me like, what the hell, man, we've been sitting here talking for five, 10 minutes and now you do this to me. So he takes off running and he's going up uh, all these trees. And uh, so I'm like, Daddy, how many times did you pump this thing? And he said, all four or five. So uh, anyway, I went to pump it and you could tell this thing did not have any pressure. Now mine, if you would have pumped mine up four or five times and shot him, he would have definitely met Jesus then. So uh, anyway... Now he's running around the trees and stuff and I can't get him. So uh, all I got to really do was pop him in the head and it didn't uh, didn't even kill him. But uh, we did uh, get to call a um, an agency that does uh, uh, bug killing, rat killing and all that kind of stuff. And they had uh, been called out to my dad's before and they had some traps set up in the attic. So uh, anyway, they came out there and uh, they filled up the hole on the side of the house and got it to where uh, we don't have to worry about squirrels getting in the attic anymore. But uh, if you're not familiar with uh, the reason why you don't want squirrels in the attic is they can chew on the wires up in your attic. And uh, if they touch those wires, it can electrocute them and it can start a fire. And uh, lots of house fires start because of squirrels in the attic. So uh, they might be cute little fuzzy critters to talk to out in the yard if you can talk to them like I did. But you don't want them in your house. It, it is a, a serious hazard. And I got some information I need to pass on to you about Dave's RV channel. So uh, let me uh, get you a short clip on that and get you caught up as to what's going on on my other channel. And uh, 
Right now, it's not good. <laughs> so anyway, thanks again, folks, for y'all sticking around listening to me uh, chit-chat today. Uh, before you go, I do want to tell you something. The uh, channel, Dave's RV channel, um, I'm not sure what's going to be going on with that channel because um, I can't go to dealerships right now. I can't get footage. I've got... Uh, I've got a couple of videos in the vault, uh, and what I mean by that is when I go filming, a lot of times I will film uh, anywhere from five to 10 RVs at a time, and um, I, I try to get as much footage as I can every time I go, because sometimes I go two hours from home. And uh, so anyway, I think I've got two, maybe three videos in the vault so uh, if you notice that I'm releasing them a week at a time as opposed to two per week, that is why. So, uh, man, I, I appreciate y'all's patience, and hopefully this won't last too long. And I hope each and every one of you are safe, healthy, and happy. I know we're all going stir crazy to get out, but uh, let's hang in there. That's what we got to do. We're, uh, we're a, a nation. We're actually a world at war trying to fight this virus and we've all got to play our part and uh, be safe, stay home, do what we're told we need to do and uh, let this thing come to an end. Folks, I appreciate it. Y'all have a great one. Hope to see y'all again real soon. Bye-bye.